Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because in time for my second American Thanksgiving. That's right, how I was here for a whole year already. I have no idea, but I've been here for a whole year, which is amazing, having a lot of fun. But in time for Thanksgiving, we are making a turkey fork and carving knife set, not just out of normal steel, not out of normal Damascus, but out of stainless steel Damascus that by what a miracle we were able to stick together. Will has made great progress on a beautiful knife. He's not here this week, he's in Seattle. I have managed to make some progress on our fork. I'm thrilled with how it's looking. Today's video is gonna be fun because we get to dive into some fine finishing detail work to bring these up to a standard that's needed for etching stainless steel and a standard that's appropriate for such a fun holiday as Thanksgiving. And so, this is gonna be getting some hand sanding time. Before we do that though, let's thank our sponsor, which is Skillshare, online learning community with over 25,000 video learning courses and everything from business to photography to marketing. Check them out. You're gonna be getting two months of Skillshare premium for free at my link in the description. Thank you, Skillshare. Let's jump in. We've got some sharp edges on our tines. Couldn't get them entirely round on the grinder. Obviously, you run out of, uh, you run out of space a little bit as you're trying to spin it around. So we're gonna lock it in the vise, take it to the files before moving to the sandpaper. Turned out I had to do a whole lot more filing than I expected. And also turns out the bench pin was the way to do it. It wasn't the best way to try and lock it in the vise. Holding it in the bench pin allowed me to spin it around as I was filing it. Worked beautifully. The trouble is the AEBL in the stainless steel is extremely hard and I am having an enormous amount of difficulty cutting it with a file. So that's why I went ahead and took the torch. Thank goodness it still works. And gave it a little heating just to get it up to a little bit of temperature to let it slowly cool down. Hopefully it's gonna soften it up a little bit. Heating it up and letting it cool down uh, did not soften it at all. Given up on the files, moving to sandpaper. Righty ho, so this sandpaper here is the bee's knees. It is the sandpaper that differentiates from lower leg to upper leg in that it is just so high performance. We can't even get over it. This is Rhino Wet Redline sandpaper. And before using this sandpaper, life was very different. Life involved significantly more effort. Now, it did mean I had bigger biceps from all the extra work I had to do, but it meant that I wasted hours and hours and hours of my life hand sanding things with poor sandpaper. This stuff is so much better than other hand sanding abrasives on the market, other sheets of abrasive like this, because it has an aluminum oxide grain, which is the best we have found for sanding on hardened steels. And that's why we have it on our website. It's a great opportunity to go check it out. Right, sand time. One of the things that I don't like about knife making in this kind of craft is oftentimes you have stuff stuck in a vise in such a way that if somebody was to walk into it, they would probably die. So what I like to do if I'm gonna step away from it and there are other people in the workshop, I like to throw something on it or just take it out of the vise altogether. It's kind of a, the best thing is to take it out of the vise. The second best thing is to throw something on it. As you can see, this is pretty cool actually. This is how we sort our abrasives. We sort them from 150 all the way down to our micron sanding paper and 2500 grit paper. We sort it in these little paper trays. You can get one of these things on Amazon works a treat. So I'm gonna be moving up to 240 grit and I wanna show you a nifty little trick. What I'm doing is I'm shoe shining the steel. Take some duct tape. Now listen guys, it absolutely has to be big pink duct tape though. No other colors of duct tape will work. You put it on the backing and then you gotta cut it off in your paper cutter. What this does is it gives you the tensile strength of duct tape while still having a very nice flexible piece of hand sanding paper. Right, here we go. looks 
good. is ready for etching. Stainless steel etching. Not just test etching, but actual stainless steel etching. Big boy stuff. The important one. The one where we can't make mistakes. But hopefully, we're not gonna be making mistakes. Because Barefoot Forge, Craig of Barefoot Forge, you can follow him on Instagram, at Barefoot Forge, he reached out to me and he's like, hey Alec, I make stainless Damascus all the time, let me go ahead and give you some tips. I'll make sure to not tell you anything that's a secret. You're welcome to use the rest. He told me about how I should etch our stainless Damascus. And so a big thank you is owed to him and I hope that you guys go check out his Instagram. He makes Damascus steel rings. The process goes like this. Instead of using muriatic acid like we thought, he recommends using ferric chloride, which apparently isn't even an acid. He wants us to use distilled water in a two to one water to acid ratio. What he also recommends is using an aquarium bubbler to put some oxygen into the mixture. Now we don't have one of those, so here's what we're gonna do instead. We're gonna use this here pot. That is not a pot. What is that? Nothing like, uh, like a tub. Tub? It's a tub? We're gonna use this here tub, put our solution into it, and then shake it all around so that we can get some air into it. Our piece is gonna go in. Oh wow! Holy moly! The pattern's already coming through! It's only gone! We, <laughs> we got stainless Damascus! And it even etched in ferric chloride. Okay, and here's what I'm gonna do using our very watertight container. I'm gonna shake it up. Oh, it looks beautiful! Look at that! Now what's weird is it's etching up here, but it's not etching back here. So what I wanna go ahead and do is get a rag on it. See if we can wipe it off. And then we'll try back in the acid. The, not acid, the stuff. It's still not etching back there, so I feel like our finish may be different. The rest of it just looks phenomenal though. <gasps> Maybe it's because I've heated up this area a couple of times after the forging. I haven't heated up this area. Let's try treating this the same way this was treated. Oh my goodness, look at the colors. That looks so beautiful. Right, let's sand back over it. Okay, let's try it this time. Oh, already it's doing so much better. Ah, oh, that must have been the trick. This looks utterly good. That's not how you speak English. This looks utterly amazing. I'm try scrubbing it with a little sandpaper. 2,500 grit wine wet. This is awesome! Yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. That's gonna do for the etching of this stainless Damascus fork. We need to move on to either the handle of the fork or the hand sanding and etching of the knife. You know what? I think we're gonna do a little handle work on the fork. Alrighty, so we'll cut us up these pieces of maple. They're rather beautiful. We're gonna use them for our handles. This piece of maple, however, is about a 10 times as much wood as we need. So we're going to think about it, draw up a plan, cut it down, and uh, oh, no. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna think about what the design wants to look like. Make a drawing, put a hole in it, then cut it down. Okay, so here's what I gotta do. I'm gonna work on the bolster first, because you haven't seen this, but before we're left, he made this bolster for the carving part of this set. And so naturally, I've gotta do the same and make my own bolster for this.
Alrighty folks, here's where we're at. We have this sliding on all the way up to here, but you'll It's on the floor now. Oh well, we can work without it. But you'll see right at this point, we start tapering out a little bit on the tang as it rounds itself back out into this, uh, this little area where the bronze is gonna meet it. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna attack our bronze piece and I'm gonna start making myself a little angled, uh, little angled clearance in it. everybody, so here's what I've done. I've gone ahead and managed to get it fitting rather closely. I then hammered on this bronze piece by drilling a piece of, uh, a piece of hole in a wood. Here is a wood and there is the, the piece of hole. What that fortunately did for us is it made ourselves a little bit of a line. So we can pull a trick that I first learned from Will, which is to actually cut ourselves a very, very small recess so that we can end up with a beautiful, beautiful fit. So we're gonna take this back upstairs. We're going under the microscope, which is awesome! I love the microscope! We're gonna use some burrs and go ahead and uh, make ourselves a little trench. Is where we're at. We have it fitting up nice and uh, nice and close. It doesn't quite fit into our little trench though. And so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna break out our favorite. The one, the only, the beautiful. You're expecting something? So with a little bit of that beautiful blue potion, it means that when we hit our fork onto the piece of bronze, it shines up the areas where there's contact. So it means I can go back upstairs and know exactly where we've got to remove. And again, the question is asked, where's Will? Because he does this way better than me. I only think we've gone and done it. Woohoo! Wait, I didn't say anything to the camera. It's glue up time! <laughs> Okay guys, so we are way past Thanksgiving. This was not ready for Thanksgiving. I am a terribly slow worker, which is embarrassing, but hopefully it's gonna be ready for Christmas, and I'm pleased that you guys are still here sticking around watching me make these fun shenanigans, and then also include a little bit of project too. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna finish this as soon as I can. Uh, apparently I am significantly slower at making things than Will is, so kudos to Will for being way faster than me, and shame on me for being a slow poach. But as we end the video, I just wanna remind you that we are launching our restock of stuff at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, and I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Today's sponsor is Skillshare, online video learning community with over 25,000 video courses in everything from business to photography to marketing. It means that you can learn skills to help propel your career further or help propel your business to new heights. The course that I'm recommending today is the Cinematography course by Dale McManus, which is gonna help teach you how to shoot expert video on any camera, and you saw that, right? Skillshare has an app, which means from the comfort of your phone or your computer, you can watch their courses bring the phone into the workshop, learn as you work. But most of all, be sure to hit my link in the description because if you do, you're gonna be getting two months of Skillshare Premium, usually just 10 bucks a month for free. Check them out, link in the description. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to all our new customers. See you on the next one, bye-bye.